<laughs> yeah, righty -o. G'day everyone, Joe here from Bow Wolf Builders. Today we've got the privilege of coming down to Talbot and meeting Alistair that runs Talbot Timbers. He's going to run through with us all the different types of materials or trees that uh, he gets to mill up and uh, create into... Straight into flooring, decking, cladding, furniture, timber, and all that kind of stuff. G'day, Alistair. Thanks heaps for having us down, mate. I really appreciate it. Yep. We've also got a few different machines, machines that are coming in, so we'll go through those. Hopefully, Alistair will let us have a good look at that and uh, go through the whole process. So, stay with us, and we'll go through it all one by one. So, what have we got here, Alistair? What type of timber? Red iron bark. These logs. Radio. They're fairly, fairly fresh logs. Have been in here uh, about. Three weeks, I suppose. And, uh, all coppice growth. That means that um, the tree's been cut down, and the new tree's grown straight from the stump. So it grows from the stump. Yeah. Because what you, well, certain trees you actually have to burn to regrow them again. So what, what are those? It's usually the mountain ash type timbers in the, in the yeah, mountain right, yeah. areas. They need um, fire to to get the seed to regrow. Yeah, right. But these ones, uh, yeah, mainly just grow back from the stump. Okay. So everything you see here today. Is coppice growth. Yeah. So if that's the case, is this new growth forest then? It wouldn't be old growth if it's... That's right, yeah. During the gold rush days of the 1850s, most of these forests were clear felled. Yep. For the timber, for, for uh, poles, props, uh, firewood. Yep. And uh, so this is probably the third regrowth, second and third regrowth oh, right. in those days. Okay. Yeah. So from here, uh, three weeks old, so we try and get them onto the mill as quickly as we can from here? Yes. Yeah, yeah. rightio. Yeah, just to avoid cracking on the outside of the log, which reduces the yield. Okay. The log. Yeah. So if the tree, if you fell a tree, uh, like we've got the grey ones over here, mm -hmm. and you were saying they're about five years old? Yeah. Do we get much out of those? Is there any use in those at all? Yeah, we, we can make uh, like square posts, um, rails, sort of lo lower grade products, not the higher grade products yep. so much because yep. of the cracking that's happened. Is the cracking due to the moisture content in the timber? It's the moisture trying to get out and that uh, it dries on the outside and then releasing the moisture so the more faster it releases it's faster it cracks over. Okay, yeah. so different trees have different moisture yes, content right. obviously and so if it was a tighter grain or a looser grain, so if we're going for a pine for example um, or if we're going for a hardwood, they would crack completely differently? Yeah, yeah they do. Pine seems to hang in there a, a fair bit but um, it's the same story, you want to mill it as fast as possible. Okay. Yeah, but you know, your eucalypts out in mountain timbers, they, they can crack over fairly quickly. I've passed a few mills in my time where they've got the water sprinklers going over all of the logs. Why yep. is that? That's, yeah, to stop that cracking, to keep the moisture on the outside of the log. Yep. Stop the sun and the wind from drying those logs out okay. too fast. And again, causing degrade and you know, less yield. Okay, so when you're saying less yield, we'll get a lot too too much wastage basically exactly. out of it because yeah. we've got all, all of our certain cuts that we're getting out of them, mm -hmm. and so if we if we've got the splits, we're not going to be able to get the most That's out of right. those. Yeah. Is this why you've kept the bark on these? There's two reasons for that. Uh, one is to, to slow the drying rate down, the yep. logs, and the other is it's very difficult to remove. So we leave it on. Um, it does cost more in transportation. Well, you, the bark stays on the outside of the timber, so um, when you're milling, you, you, you're milling uh, right as close as you can oh, to the bark. Yeah, right. And what's left um, over our shoulder here is the firewood, and the bark stays on that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we're maximising as much waste that we can for... Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. yep, so talk us through these ones. The story of these logs, uh, they're naturally grown in uh, South Australia. Yeah, right. Um, sugar gum. And um, during the, from about the 1870s on, uh, they decided to start planting them in Victoria. Right. Um, for windbreaks in the western, in western Victoria, but also for, for firewood and poles and stuff. Um, during the 1850s, with the gold rush days, when they sort of, you know, clear felled the forest, they uh, were worried they weren't going to regrow. So right. they started planting plantations of sugar gum because they knew it was good timber and it had similar characteristics. Iron bark. Right. So they started planting this stuff, and um, yeah, now we're reaping the benefits from this, this timber. Okay. Good furniture timber. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Is it consistent when you mill it up? Is it? Are you getting good cuts out of it consistently? Um, from this particular plantation, we are. Yeah. Right. Uh, is this the same as the iron bark? So this would be about under three weeks. So we'll chop it down, mill it up as quickly as we can. Yeah. Okay. Yep. No worries. I see that this has got no bark on it or very little bark. Yeah. Is that just this type of tree? That's right. Because I'm just looking at this over here. Straight so right. this is the iron bark. Yep. This one's the sugar gum. That's right. Yep. Okay. 
Um, so will you still cut as close as you can to the grain of this, we leaving do. the bark on? Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. Yep. Okay. The sapwood is the... Is this paler ring here? It's right. a bit hard to see on that, but that that's not as good a timber. It's young timber growing into this timber. Right. So, so is that the colour there, that change yeah, of colour? Yeah, yeah right, right. So that timber will become this timber and new sapwood will you know, keep occurring on oh, the outside. Oh, right. Sure. Mm. And so this is no good because it's too soft? Yeah, it's not as durable. Right, okay. Mostly. No yeah. worries. Yeah, so, so you, you try and eliminate that as much as possible in your product. The closer we get to the heartwood, the better. Yeah, um, from this region to this region, yep. the best timber. Yep. Not so good in the centre. Right. It's not as dense and tends to be more brittle. Okay. Back sawn, as we call it, yep. would be a board coming out like that. The growth rings are running like that. Rightio. That's what you call back sawn. That's back sawn. Not quite such a stable board. The board tends to want to cup. Right, okay. Not always, but sometimes. Quarter sawn is a board this way. Growth ring's running this way. Right. Very stable. Yep. Doesn't move around, doesn't shrink much. Yep. Back sawn shrinks more. Right. Yeah. Sawmills try to saw quarter right. sawn. Okay. Depending on the log, the size of the log, um, in this instance, where what logs we handle fairly small, a lot of back sawn boards, but because the timber is so dense, it's a lot more stable. Right, okay. Yeah.